A new year is upon us, and with it, a brand new season on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Nine events all across the country to determine the best of the best. And of course, the big one, the single most prestigious tournament in the world, when we'll crown our new world champion at the 2022 Bassmaster Classic at Lake Hartwell. The season is a test like no other. The best anglers awesome. in the world battling it out on the top lakes in the U.S. to make their lifelong dreams come true. It is never easy, and some have worked a lifetime to get here, but the thrill of winning lasts forever. Join us as we prepare for 2022 by taking a look back at an amazing 2021 season. This is the 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series Recap Show. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a season long battle. Hello and welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I am Tommy Sanders, alongside with Ronnie Moore here. And in just a few short weeks, we're going to start the 2022 season of the Bassmaster Elite Series right here on Fox Sports 1. So we thought the best way to get you all prepped for that, Ronnie, would be to look back at an incredible 2021 season. And there is a lot to look back on there. We can't show you where we're going until we go back through where we've been. And the 2021 season did start great down in Florida, a place that we know quite a bit, the St. John's River. But it's one of those places, it's one in a different area every single mm. time we go there. And this year, it was won by a different face. Brian knew a rookie got to take the title there but overall Tommy from Florida to Texas to New York and everywhere in between it was such a dynamic year a lot of new faces a lot of tears were shed oh, a lot yeah. of crazy weather as well in between that affected all of these events and in between all the big storylines the broad strokes some specific moments that we do not want to miss we want to see him again we will remember Taku time in his smallmouth Disneyland when he had those awesome <laughs> moments at the St. Lawrence River we will remember those final fish catches and the guys maybe having to do some strategy long long run Runs, managing gasoline, making sure they get back on time. There was a lot of key moments this year that really captured our hearts and the fans watching online. Hey, one angler was affected with a victory, but really 20 to 30,000, even more fans will always remember those moments that their favorite angler became a legend in the world. A lot to cover over the next few weeks and no time like the present to begin right now. So why don't you start that journey for us, Ronnie Moore. Why don't we just go around the horn from our entire 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series season. We started the St. John's River. Palatka, Florida was our host town. And the St. John's River is a place, Tommy, we talked about it. It's legendary. It's a great body of water. It's so vast, though, 100 miles to fish. We saw some fantastic action with Brian New, our rookie, taking the championship trophy there. Then we jumped over to the Tennessee River. Had a lot of different conditions changing. Low water conditions, really cold temperatures as well. And we got to see a guy go against the grain, Jeff Gustafson took the title there, all smallmouth. No one thought it could be done. Four days, five fish each day, and he got the title there. We take it over to Pickwick Lake in Alabama. Flooded conditions as well. Basically, we put a second lake on top of this body of water, an extra six feet of water. We got to see a legend of the sport, one of the most consistent and emotional anglers, catch a giant fish on the final day, one of those game changers we know you needed, and he took the title, Bill Lowen at Pickwick. Then we go to the Sabine River down the Texas Louisiana wow. border. Tough fishing, but also very vast. We have anglers driving over two hours away just to get to Houston, Texas to fish. You've got guys going an hour and a half north of the venue. We had a veteran of the sport return to the Elite Series and get to host, hoist a blue trophy in his return. Then we go to Lake Fork, one of the most heavyweight tournaments we will ever have on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Every year we come here, it's over 100 pounds, and we had a local boy win. Lee Livesey taking the title there, had a dramatic final day, the third biggest bag in Bassmaster Elite Series history, and he took the title on his home body of water. We waited a couple weeks, went to Neely Henry Lake in the state of Alabama, Gadsden, Alabama. Flooded conditions there, postponed the event for a few days, but we had a four-day event going. Crazy conditions for these anglers, but they adjusted each and every day, and another local, took the title this week, young angler Wes Logan. And we jumped about an hour away from there in the state of Alabama to Lake Gunnersville, place that we've gone over 20 times with Bassmaster history. 
A lot of people know Gunnersville, but it was a different Gunnersville this year. A lot more grass growing, a lot more shallow fishing, and man, a dominant performance, 17 pound win by Caleb Kufal. Gotta take a two week break before we jump into the Bassmaster Classic where Hank Cherry tried to defend his title after winning in 2020, and he did successfully. Another great week, but this time in the state of Texas, winning his back-to-back -back classic. Now we go what we call the Northern Swing, going up to Lake Champlain. Bassmaster Elite Series always loves coming there because you can catch largemouth and smallmouth. Brian Schmidt, one of the best, well-versed anglers there, took the title in dramatic fashion that final day. We had a little bit of St. Lawrence River action, the best smallmouth bass fishery in the country, and it provided a lot of dramatic events there. We had the Canadians in factory for the win. We had a guy who had to win to get in the classic, and then we had Taku Tan. Taku Ito taking the title there. A great performance all year long from Seth Vider, and he captivated the minds and the thoughts of all of our anglers and our fans, and he was our Angler of the Year champion as well. The great stuff right there, and that was just a taste, Ronnie. I, I think we're ready to go to look at some specific stories right now. Let's start with the first event of the season. We started on the legendary St. John's River. No place like it on the face of the earth, and one big story starts to emerge after a couple of days of fishing. It really is like the Daytona 500. We kick our year off in Florida, the St. John's River. It's a place we know very well, but it gives us a different look every single time, and this look was from Brian New, a guy who, hey, he was hindered with that fog delay on day one of the event, but he got better every single single day. Final day, he was about sixth place, but he made that comeback. And we really got to learn more about this Bassmaster Elite Series rookie that won his first two ever Bassmaster events. Man, it's day four of Bassmaster Elite Series, St. John's River. We're going to try to catch us some bass. I haven't caught a, a true big one yet. I mean, uh, like I haven't actually caught a legit five pounder. And, you know, I had 20 and 21 the last two days. So Hopefully I can do that again today and then maybe add in two eight or nine pounders and you know, we'll be right there. It, it is Florida, anything can happen, you know. A guy can go from catching 26 to, you know, one day to catching six the next. Hopefully we catch a giant bag. So let's go, I'm ready, let's do it. Sticking with that black and blue, zooms linky. It's a fish catcher. It just catches them, dude. Two, three. We got one. I think what I was doing was good luck. <laughs> Um, got a couple nice ones. I caught a pretty nice one just a minute ago. Um, just caught my limit. Um, and just actually made a coal as well. And, uh, you know, I think we're somewhere between 15 and 16 pounds now. Definitely not the goal. Yeah. We're about 10 to 12 pounds from the goal. That's her, son. I've been waiting on this fish all week. It ain't what I thought it was, but it's a pretty dang good one. But we got a pretty good start. <sighs> got a lot of work left to do. But hey, we're chipping away, man. We're chipping away, that's all we can do. I think it was 214. Called a 115, so hey, pound at a time. At least we're not calling ounces. Calling pounds, I like calling pounds. It's way more fun than ounces. And it's way more money. So humid. Yeah. Still no bigs, man. Three, two. Ah, uh, we got, you know, a couple more hours. Hopefully we can get the cooling. Good God, look at that gator, son. That's a big one. Two hours, 
I actually got a little bit more than that. How you doing? I've been looking for you all day. I caught a five pounder. Boys and girls, it took me four days. Pounds, baby. All right. That's a big one. Oh God, I love bass fishing. Four eight. Once again, pounds. I think I got excited or something. <laughs> How could you not? Dude, he's got a snake or a lizard in his throat. Can you see it? The St. John's River, so unique, so explosive, and we've been there so many got times, one. but you never take anything for granted oh, one tournament to the next, <laughs> because it always shows us something new. It's oh, God, Brian, new, in this case, who's figuring it out in this 2021 Pounds. Elite event, and we will see more of that when we come back. All right. The lure of Florida fishing in That's late winter is so strong. And what a place for an Elite Series tournament because them. one or two giants yes, on any sir. given day, any given Florida. hour, could totally turn your tournament around. Oh. In this one, on the St. John's last February, Brian New, the rookie, has turned his maiden voyage in the right direction. He goes into the final day in sixth place. A great position, but definitely needs a few more fish to seal the deal. I got an idea. I mean, you can tell this is at the mouth of a little, a little backwater deal, a little creek. It's a big flat at the mouth of it. I'm gonna go fish another one like that. There's one right down here. Let's go. I don't like this. I'm gonna go back out. Maybe I do like it. Oh! Yeah! Dude, I just said I don't like this. I'm fixing to leave. Five, four. <laughs> what what did just happen dude and i literally literally just said i don't like this i'm fixing to leave and it says don't and i jerk and i catch i don't know whatever it was is the biggest bass i've caught this week i freaking love it yeah it takes a lot to get me excited, boys and girls. I'm excited. What am I at now? 23? That ain't enough. But we just made some money. We've got something for them. I get, I catch a nine pounder, it's, they better freaking catch them, son. Dude, I, I think I'm gonna catch a giant. Like, chances are I don't, but, oh man, what a cool, cool, blessed, awesome freaking week.
Berkeley Fusion 19, 5 volt. That same 5 inch black and blue zoom Zlinky. I've caught like I, almost every bass I've weighed in this week. That Berkeley War Pig was a big player in keeping me calm and settling me down every day until today. I didn't do it today. There was no need to do it today. And I busted that butt today. Yeah! Let's go. I'm gonna put my rain suit on and we're gonna buggy it on up. That's my first tournament. And um, it's, it's special. I don't know that I'm gonna win. I probably won't. But it's a blessed week. That's that's all I've got. Really, it, it really is. Um, we're gonna see how it shakes out here in a minute. And no matter what, um, good week. Again in 2021, it's evident why the St. Johns River is a great place to kick off the season. A rookie starting slow and gaining momentum and incredibly notching the win in his debut on the circuit. We're recapping a great year and when we return, some of the eye-popping moments from that momentous week on the St. Johns. Give me some. How about that for the first cast? Well, the St. John's River, not just a great playing field, but what a storyline to start our 2021 season. A rookie, his first outing on the Bassmaster Elite Series, and Brian New is your champion. Not only does it help him financially, $100,000 to the bottom line for this Elite Series rookie getting his career started, but man, he will never forget winning a blue trophy in his first Elite Series event. But a lot of other anglers had great moments this week as well, Tommy. We had some big fish catches from way up the St. John's River into Rodman way down the lake. So we're going to take you through our top 10 catches of the week. Those awesome moments for the St. John's. Number 10. How about Alabama veteran Matt Heron at work during his best day of the tournament. This big one right here anchored a 17 pound three ounce limit, but Matt would just miss the cut for the final day by three spots. But still a good start for his 2021 season. You know what they call that in Alabama, don't you? Alabama, we call that that crap eating grin. That's what that is. Number nine. That was a great catch, Tommy, but number nine on the list, Cliff Prince, the local pro, the guy who knows the most about the St. John's River, never finishing outside the top 20 hardly on his home body of water. And he had a different approach fishing these canals, and he really paid off, and he made another final day Hell cut. Oh, yeah, what I'm talking about. Oh, give me some knuckles on that one, Hammer. That's what we need right there, five, just like that. And I'll stand out here and let it rain all day. That's what I'm talking about. Come on with that. Number eight. Number eight, you talk about hammers. A true hammer in recent years here on the St. John's River has been the veteran Mark Menendez. Here he is on day number four, a super consistent tournament every day, 16 pounds yes, plus, and he will finish in fifth sure. place. Of course, you remember Mark There's from uh, two now. years ago, third place now. after a big Ooh. final day here in 2019. Look at what I found. Number seven. That takes us to number seven on our top 10 list. That's John Cruz starting the week off day one, one of our first cameras on the water. We knew spawning fish were gonna be huge this that's event. And did he pay off? Day. Yes, a big one early on this event. And that's exactly what you want. Number six. 
about Seth Fighter. Seth Fighter also jumping a big one in this canal. Canals played big in this tournament, that is for sure. Not for everybody, but for certain guys, they were fantastic. This is where he begins his campaign for Angler of the Year in 2021. A good tournament here in Florida, third place. That is a bonus for Seth Fighter. We got him. Yes, sir. Slow grind. Boom. Number five. Can't have a top 10 without including our champion, Brian New. The final day, he had a great bag of fish. He had a great limit, had himself in contention, but he needed another good one to solidify his chances of winning. And late in the day, on the final day, this one came in the boat. Yeah! Yeah! It takes a lot to get me excited, boys and girls. I'm excited. Number four. How about another angler having a great start in Florida? Kentucky angler, Mike Huff with the good, good start, 18 and a half pounds on this day. But unfortunately, he would miss the cut by a single spot, but nonetheless, boy, that's a bonus. We can come to Florida and come away Terrible with points like this. Terrible fish landing, but I'll take it. And for my boys back in Kentucky, baby. Number three. What a giant fish for Mike Huff. But number three, we're going to take it to our day one and day two leader of this event, Gary Klaus, making the longest run of anyone, going all the way through multiple lakes on the oh. St. John's River to get down to his spot, trying to maximize his fish. And Tommy, it wasn't looking too good on day two, but this one gave him a big upgrade. And we will see just how big of a call it was. That is a big Florida fish, but when you replace a small one, it just makes it feel that much bigger. I think that's a call. <laughs> number two. Hey, number two is Wes Logan of Alabama, a Florida giant on his way to the biggest day of the tournament for him, 21 pounds and two ounces. 2021 would be the year that Wes Logan would come into his own here on the Bassmaster Elite Series. More on that later on in this series, but right now, what a great start. Look at that, Florida giant for Wes Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Hard to top that fish catch, but why don't we just go to our 2020 Bassmaster oh, Classic yeah, champion, Hank Cherry. Right we started the year off with him on camera. It was a little we tough go. going there. We were saying we need our Classic champ to get off to a good start so we can carry that storyline throughout the year. Well, they only caught three fish on day one of this event. Still made the final day. <laughs> because if you're only gonna catch three, that's the one you wanna catch. A giant fish, an eight pounder for Tank Cherry early on in this event. And Tommy, he said, I think it's a small one up there on the bank. Well, when he set the hook into it, it turned out to be a large one and it played big for him this week. Some big, big moments overall, a great show from the St. John's River, but we're gonna get a completely new look when we come back. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yeah. An explosive fishery and also a challenging playing field. So hard to top the kickoff event of the year in Florida, but with the first stop done, our anglers move on to a different part of the country in a very different setting before them. Fort Loudon and Teleco on the Tennessee River system, the top end of this river that is so important to the sport of bass fishing. The anglers are greeted with cold, muddy water in the wake of a flood, but the best in the business are ready to crack the code. Many fall short, but we were treated to one of the most dominating performances ever by a single angler in these less than ideal conditions. Only one Canadian, Chris Johnston, has won on the Elite Series, but that will change this week in Tennessee. Let's bring up a Bassmaster Classic qualifier, two-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier from Keewatin, Ontario, Canada, the great Canadian snow leopard, Gussie Jeff Gustafson. 17 pounds, 14 ounces, 17, 14. Gussie rockets to the top of the leaderboard. I caught five keepers the whole practice. There's a big one. So that, it, I mean, it was a legit, like one of the toughest practices I ever had. And uh, I found a little something yesterday and I, and I didn't catch big fish like that yesterday, but it was just something that, you know, to go, like I literally didn't have a lot of options. I went and I, I'm catching them a way that I love, love to fish at home. And it, and, it, and it was, you know, I didn't expect it to be that easy this morning. Jeff Gustafson, wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's awesome, that's a little upgrade. Fun as it would be to keep catching them. 
We've got to get him again tomorrow. You know, I went out, you know, catching them a way that I like to fish back home. I've caught thousands of smallmouths doing that, and so I'm comfortable the way I'm fishing. We'll just see what see what happens today. Yeah. Not gonna make it. There's one. That's a keeper. This one's angry. I should make it. Hell yeah, we're on the board, baby. Sweet. You know when you hook those ones though, they're just a lot more solid. There we go. It's a skinny one, but it might be long enough. Yes. Hey, if I get five of these again, we're gonna be in good shape. That's good though, I just moved over a bit. And they're here. That's a big one, that's a keeper. Yes, that'll work. That's gonna make it, I think. Oh yeah, 19 incher. Here comes one. It'd be nice if there wasn't all the current, but that's probably why the fish are here. So you just, otherwise you could just sit on top of them and probably pluck them, but you just kind of got to drift over them and... Yes! Woo! Nice. Okay. One more. One more. And then we can go try and find some new spots. Oh! Darn it. It's got drilled. That feels good. Come on, baby. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We got a limit. Oh! Well, they're not as big as yesterday, but... I think five's gonna go a long way. It got the job done here on day number two. Another limit of 18 inch smallmouth. What a tournament he is having. I'm catching them fishing pretty deep and marking them on my hummingbird. And it's, it's just a way that we fish a lot at home up on Lake of the Woods, Rainy Lake. And I've been waiting like, uh, this is eight or nine years I've been fishing down here. This is, I've been just like dying for, to get to fish, to do this in one of these tournaments. Feels good. Oh, it's gonna be cold. 17 and three quarters. Come on, big one. Oh, I think that will make it. Nice. We got a keeper. Oh, that water's cold. 45 degrees. Beauty. Yes, it's happening. Ah. Beautiful. That's not gonna weigh a whole lot, but hey, the limit take a lot of pressure off this today. That feels good. Yes. Beautiful. Feels good. It's a chunk, but I think it's gonna be one of those line burners. Oh. Just barely, we're gonna try and call this one just to, boom, quick limit. Yeah. Well, yeah, real good start. Obviously, 
catching five was the main goal today so i got that i got a few just keepers that don't weigh a whole lot so i mean still pretty solid that takes the pressure off but i'm gonna i'm gonna hang around here and try and try and find a couple more little juice spots if i can you know i'd like to get all my fish maybe to be over three pounds so awesome start have some fun here today Ooh. not as big as i thought another 17 and 7 eighths i've caught like a bunch of them doesn't make it <sighs> what a shame I, I, everyone's seen, I've caught every, every one of my fish on a four inch Z-Man uh, jerk shad, scented jerk shad. I'm fishing it on a, a jig that a friend of mine at home makes. Um, it's called a smeltinator and Lake of the Woods Sports Headquarters in Kenora makes it. And uh, really nice, you know, realistic minnow head jig. Um, it's got a Gamagatsu hook in it. That's kind of the, the most important thing for me as far, you know, like for tournament fishing, I want a good quality, strong hook. Normally, a Ned Rig's pretty tough to beat just about everywhere I've ever fished for smallmouths, Kula stick, and uh, these things are just not eating off the bottom, I don't think, really at all. And, uh, you know, all the fish I've caught have been on this jerk shad, and I, I've seen, you know, just this last one I caught puked up a five or six inch big shad and uh, it just you know kind of verifies what they're what they're feeding on as far as this technique goes that I'm doing um, it, it, everyone down here calls it a Dimitri rig but we we've been doing this at home for a long time I've been waiting for for years to get to do this in a tournament down here and this is this is kind of the first time that it's uh, it's really been a, a good deal for me there's one. Oh yeah, that's that's a helper. I think hopefully it's fat. Yeah, that's the one we need. Yes, that should be the one. Yeah, baby. All right, everybody, cross your fingers. Cut, cut it. Oh yeah, we got a 19 incher. He has led since day number one. 15 pounds, 5 ounces, gives him 48 pounds and 13 ounces. And once again, five fish away from the ultimate prize and becoming the second Canadian ever to do it. Well, who saw it coming? Three near flawless days for Jeff Gustafson. And the Canadian is getting it done solely with smallmouth bass. But what a window of opportunity. One more day, five more fish, and he could in his third year with the series a champion and only the second Canadian ever to do it. We'll see the final chapter of this one when we come back. All right, everybody cross your fingers. The final day and 10 anglers left in Knoxville, ready to go to work on Fort Loudon and Teleco. Nine of them looking to run down the leader, Canadian Jeff Gustafson. The start of today brings the first major challenge, Paul. Poor visibility actually delaying the start of fishing. It has to be an advantage to Gustafson, who has the winning game plan so far, and would like nothing better than to run out the clock. But the truth is, he will need to catch one more day. Oh, uh, well. As you can see, it's uh, we're we're soft in here, uh, so yeah, well, I got a little anxiety. I want to go. I want to go get this done, and uh, you know, just gonna have to wait till this fog burns off. So, and I mean, hopefully, if nothing's really changed, I, I you know, I should be able to go go catch a few. So I'm I'm excited to go fishing, but uh, I wanna wanna get it going. Jeff Gustafson. I live in Lake, on Lake of the Woods, uh, fish there, Rainy Lake a lot, and phenomenal smallmouth fish. And we have some really good tournaments in the summer. And uh, but this is something that you know a lot of local anglers are using up there. That's a honey. Yes. Woo. Yeah, baby. Look at that. Deep. Yes. I'm not even measuring that one. <laughs> oh, that takes some pressure off. I set the hook, there was like four more with it too, so. 
get this done. There's a big one. This one's close. Yes. Get out my big measuring board. I heard Zona was making fun of me for this, but uh, when you catch big bass, you gotta have a big board. Just for Lake Fork when I need to measure all my 24 inches. The whole system is all about letting it down, but when you get on top of fish with your boat, um, it's almost like ice fishing when we use it. We, we watch the jig on the screen, and you always want to keep it above the fish. So if the fish are three or four feet off the bottom, you know, I want this bait to be two or three feet above the fish. And it seems like sometimes if you just like let it fall past the fish, that you know, they know something's up, they don't like that. I always want to keep it above the fish. A lot of times when I see them come up, uh, you got to give it a little shake. You see me do that or just lift it a little bit and that kind of triggers them to bite. Some of them just come on there and it's like whack. It's almost like getting a punch in the arm. They hit it so hard. You hold it still and when they come up and bite it, it's just like getting a punch in the arm. It's fun and, uh, and then the fight is on. Oh yeah, that's a big one, baby. Oh, come here. <laughs> that was not pretty, but I think we got us another keeper. Oh, it's kind of windy. Oh, boom, 19 and a half. Yes. Oh, that might have been the ugliest fish catch of, of all time, but it's in my live well. Steve's got to catch them now, so uh, and 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 everybody. So I'm getting I'm getting closer. This came along. It got really popular around 2004, 2005, and Jim and Bill Linder, um, Ron Linder is their is their father. They won the Fort Francis Canadian Bass Championship, one of our big Canadian tournaments, uh, two years in a row, you, doing using this style of bait, and they just stumbled onto this pattern and, and shared it. They did some TV shows about it over the years, but but Ron, their father, uh, called it moping, and that's that's so that's what we all call it up north. We call the Demiki rig. Um, we just call it moping. Right. That's the technique. Almost there. Come on. That's gonna be close. Come on. If this thing makes it, I'm gonna yell. <laughs> Everybody's yelling on shore. All right, barely. Oh, I'm not that excited because I would like to get rid of these two that are that close. Um, but they made it, so I like my chances, I think. But um, you know, it's a long ride back. It's 40 miles, and uh, just you know, I think I got what I needed to get, and I'm gonna go 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 back, bring her back. And I mean, it's been. It's been tougher, you know, after that morning. The mornings have been the best, and luckily we got here in time to sort of catch the tail end of that good bite. So yeah, we're gonna get her home, get those fish measured. He's led this tournament since day number one. Gussie Jeff Gussin. 14 pounds, three ounces, with 63 pounds even. From this moment on, you're a Bassmaster Elite Series champion. This baby's way heavier than you think. <laughs> Jeff Gustafson dominates the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite on the Tennessee River.
Before the tournament began, no one was saying it could be won solely on small mount. There at the end stood Jeff Gustafson having fought the limit of 20 keepers all small mount. With this unexpected bounty, he was able to fend off the last of his pursuers who gave it everything, but in the end couldn't put together four solid days despite some impressive moments. When we come back, we will look at the angler who made moves up and down the leaderboard all week, but in the end settled as the bridesmaid. Every Elite Series event is four days of fishing, weather permitting. The weather more or less cooperated in Knoxville, but like every stop, getting a top-notch result on each day is next to impossible. Jeff Gustafson did it, and he did it with smallmouth. Meanwhile, Steve Kennedy was striving to do the same with largemouth bass. He would get closer to the leader than anyone else, but in the end, it would be a story of too many ups and downs. Well, get ready for it. It's time to identify our Mercury move of the tournament. And of course, the tournament we are talking about, second stop of the year, the Bassmaster Elite Series, the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite on the Tennessee River. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders here with Ronnie Moore. And Ronnie, when we talk about a move of the tournament, oftentimes it can involve a move up or a move down, or both, and that's the case this time. And normally you see it from the leader because they make a big move to win the event, but Gussie stayed at the top all week, and so the movers were the ones who struggled and the ones who excelled. And Steve Kennedy, he encompassed both of that. A tough day two, dropped down the standings, a great day three and day four to rise right back up. Well, it was Steve Kennedy who got off to a good start, as you say, on day number one. Ronnie, super solid start, 14 pounds even, which is above expectations for this fishery coming into the tournament. He was behind the eight ball a little bit because because Gustafson had 17, 14. He had a three pound, 14 ounce deficit, but he was sitting there in second, like you said, then a tough day to only two bass, to his credit, that good small mouth. He broke off a few fish and some critical errors there set him back. But then Tommy, the 20 pound, 14 ounce a day, we got to see it on Bassmaster Live. That six pound, five ounce fish really helped. But overall, day three was when he figured it out. Check that out. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, uh, yeah, I managed to get two four pounders earlier. And, uh, I looked down and throw. Look at the shed they're feeding on. See that? From Auburn, Alabama, Steve Kennedy. 20 pounds, 14 ounces. 20 pounds, 14 ounces. And on day number three, he doubles his weight from the first two days and moves all the way into second place with 40 pounds, 15 ounces. Boom shakalaka, j -j 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 giant bass. Well, the biggest stringer of the tournament, not by a little, but by a lot, Ronnie. And we listened to Steve Kennedy all that day and seemed to be what clued him in to what was going on was the fact that we had falling water and the water movement had slowed a little bit. The water did slow and it exposed some of those milfoil patches, those grass patches that were hidden with that dirty water. He started to be able to see those and he knew the fish, they had to either move to those or the next piece of wood. He also made a key change to, uh, to make this move. He went from a jig on day one and two that he was flipping that isolated cover with. Once that water fell out, he needed to cover more water and he did so with a bladed jig, that chatterbait. Uh, and, and that showed you on day three and day four how good his two days were. Well, day four was no slouch by any means, but he had such a huge mountain to climb on that day. Absolutely right, Tommy. A big disadvantage, almost double digit weight the entire final day, but he kept getting better and better and better and ended up closing in that gap to considerable range to finish second. There he is. Oh my goodness. He's all hung up in the troll motor. There had got to be one in there. <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> calling my shots. There's got to be one in there. <laughs> A good day by anyone's reckoning, just not enough. And one of the clues, when we saw that in that last shot, those little bits of milfoil scattered there right in front of him. That was special for him, too, and he, he figured out that on day number three as well. It was. Jeff Gustafson had a day two lead of a, a total weight of over 33, 34 pounds. His final two days, almost 36 pounds. So he was on the right quality fish to make that move into second place. Well, that's it, Steve Kennedy, your Mercury move of the tournament.
to memorable events in the books as we run down the 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series seasons. The rookie, Brian New, engineering a comeback and winning in his first Elite event ever. And Jeff Gustafson, looking for and finding something completely different to exploit. The season starts with two first-time winners. We'll move on to the next two stops next time when our look at 2021 continues. <laughs>